All right, so in this video, we're gonna be putting together the box itself. Uh, in the last video, we put together the reflectors that are gonna go on top with the mylar and the zip ties. Uh, in this video, I'm not gonna go over the outside here. What I'm gonna do, there's just so many moving parts and so many uh, different steps to this that I'm just gonna be doing the interior of the box, the sheet metal, the, the trim right here, these bolts. Uh, and in the next video, we'll go through the insulation and the, the exterior and painting this and, and the screws and all of that stuff. Uh, so with this part, the first thing I started with was just the skeleton of the box. Uh, I started at the base and made the, the base square uh, 17 by 17. Now with this, there's a lot of dimensions that, that go on with this project. So I've got a full post uh, and a detailed tutorial over at DIYprepping.net. Uh, but I started off with the base and I just used a nail gun. This is optional. If you don't have a nail gun, um, you can just do this with the screws. Uh, it just makes it a little easier with the nail gun to get everything in place before, before I permanently fasten everything together with, those, with the screws. If you do use the screws, make sure you drill a hole first before you put the screw in there. Uh, that way you don't split the wood. Uh, but I put all four of these together, made sure the box was 17 by 17. Uh, the interior would be 14 by 14. I used two by twos. Uh, two by twos aren't actually two inches by two inches. They're one and a half by one and a half. So all of your measurements need to, to take that into account. Uh, but the base, like I said, uh, 17 inches by 17 inches on the outside, which makes it 14 inches by 14 inches on the inside. Just make sure that everything is square. And then the next part, what I did was, was put the posts on there. Uh, the back posts uh, are 10 and a half inches long. Uh, and this is because they sit on top of that bottom piece, which is one and a half. So it'd be 12 inches high total. Uh, and then the front piece, I needed eight inches high total. Uh, so the front pieces are six and a half. Now you'll notice in the next part, I have to cut the angle off of this front panel. Uh, but for now, uh, just leave though, make sure it's at least eight inches long. Uh, that way you get the proper angle on that. Uh, with these, um, you can, like I said, I use the brad nails to do this. Uh, you can uh, drill, the, drill these into place though. Just make sure it's square and make sure you use a drill bit to, to drill a hole first before you actually drill that screw in. Okay, so the next part, I wanted to put the rails, these side rails on uh, and make sure um, that it was the proper height and that I got that the angles correctly. So what I did was just fastened it to the front and the back, uh, the back posts here with some clamps. And I made sure that it was flush along the inside of both the back and the front posts. Uh, that way it gives me the angle that I need to cut it at. And once I got it fastened and made sure everything was square, uh, make sure it was connected in the right spots. And then you just trace your line and it gives you exactly where you need to cut uh, to fasten these two together. You'll notice on the front post that there is just a, a little bit of a lip because that front post is square. But what I did was just take my skill saw and just carefully kind of trim that after I got these two side posts on uh, or side rails on, I just trim that to make that that flush. It doesn't matter so much in the back here because when I put that piece on top, um, it's going to overlap that anyway. It's not going to be in the way, but in the at the bottom, if that piece was still there, it would be in the way of that top piece setting down flush. And then with these, you just drill drill it on the same way. I used uh, again, I used brad nails to just kind of hold it in place. Uh, that way, when you're putting the drill the the drill bit in and then the screws. Uh, nothing moves around on you or doesn't move around as much. Again, that's it's up to you if you decide to, if you can go that route or not. Now, it's important that when you're drilling these holes, uh, you don't want to do exactly center because as you can see in this, when you're drilling exact, if you drill exactly center, when you go to drill the other side, you're not going to be able to get that, uh, that screw in there. So make sure it's offset either to the top or the bottom just a little bit. That way, when you go to cross those screws, uh, you're not going to be hitting one as you're trying to get the other one in. So with that, that's the frame. And then I also decided uh, I needed to put a few extra, not supports in there, but a few extra pieces of wood for when I, you know, you've got these 
these screws, these bolts right here, these self-tapping screws, that those needed some place to uh, be actually drilled into. And also the, the bolts up here that hold the rack, I needed a piece of wood inside there uh, to hold those on. So what I did basically was just take the one by two and cut one around each edge of the corners here. So eight pieces around the corners. And then what I did was measured, I believe it's five and a half inches from the back, uh, from the, the actual corner post there, five and a half inches in is where you want th these, uh, these rack bolts to be set. That way it gives you, uh, it, it gives you the ability to tilt this box and that rack will move with the box depending on the angle that you need. So uh, on the sun oven, they're five and a half inches in. So again, I did it just like the sun oven. Uh, I'll go into more detail about that here in a second. But the, the metal box, what I decided to do was I wanted one continuous piece to be the inside of the box and then put the two side panels on. Uh, so what I did was measure this out. I believe it is 33 and a half inches long and then the 14 inches wide. I also wanted an inch and a half up top uh, around these outside edges to be able to uh, fold that flap over. That way there's no, uh, no sharp edge on the inside here. It's tucked back against that. Plus it just gives it a little bit better of a seal. So what I did was I used a cutting wheel that just fits on a skill saw. Uh, take the regular saw blade off and use that. Uh, there's a bunch of different methods you can use. I wanted to get an exact straight line. I didn't want to use tin snips or anything like that. You can if that's what you have, but the cutting wheel was only about six or seven dollars, I think. So, and it's something I can use for other projects as well. Uh, but I used a straight edge and the skill saw. And what I did was cut this down uh, to the 33 and a half inches long because it's going to be the one, two, three pieces along with the folding flap and then the 14 inches wide. That way it's all one continuous piece down the middle. Uh, and then for the sides, I just cut those uh, and then put them in the box, got the angles on the side to make sure that it was folded in the right place and did the same thing. The sides were a little bit easier than the back, uh, but just make sure that they fit the box. You know, you can do some trial and error and, and all of that. Uh, but make sure before you make that bend, make sure everything's uh, going to fit into place uh, like it should. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because with the inside here, you're going to put, or I put anyway, uh, these, these seams, these angle guards on there. Now with the bends, you can e either use a vise or the straight edge. Uh, what I did for the big part was just use the straight edge on the end of the table, fastened that really tight down, and then just banged the, the angle where I needed it. I uh, used a, a, a rubber mallet to make sure I didn't make any dents or anything like that. You can start the, the fold off by hand uh, and then just bang it in there to make sure and get that nice 45 degree angle. And then, like I said, with the vise, I used the vise to uh, do these, these one and a half inch lips, the overhang on the top. Uh, it, you know, you could use the table, you can use the vise, whatever you, whatever you need to do basically to get uh, that done. And once I got everything on the interior of the box uh, done, the side panels, the folding flaps and the, the middle panel, uh, I wanted to put on these bolts for the, the hanging rack in there. And what I did was measure it up five and a half inches uh, down, I believe one inch, uh, and then made sure and marked that on the tin. I, I drilled from starting from the, the sheet metal to the outside. That way I got the hole through the sheet metal uh, as well as the outside. And then put those bolts through. Uh, the bolts, you should put the, the bolt through, then a washer, and then the actual nut on there. Uh, for the outside of this, I wanted to make sure that it was flush, that I was going to be able to put these panels on. Uh, so I just drilled a larger hole the size of the nut on the outside of the panel, uh, just large, just big enough to let that, uh, let that screw head or that nut bolt head uh, inset into the wood so it was flush against the wood. Uh, just something that's a little bit larger than the head of the bolt itself. Now with the, the edges, with the, the framing of this, the interior of the box, I wanted to seal it uh, just to give it uh, a little, help it retain the heat a little bit more. Now I used uh, aluminum angle iron. Uh, you could use wood, 
Uh, the reason that, that I, you know, I say either wood or the aluminum is I didn't want to put any caulking or any glue or anything on the interior of this box that may give off toxic fumes. Uh, so with this angle iron and some self-tapping screws, the smallest, basically the smallest self-tapping screws that I can find because I didn't want a bunch of stuff sticking out in the box. Uh, with those, you just cut these, the three pieces on the left side, three pieces on the right side, and fasten those in. Uh, you can take that, that hammer or even just a regular hammer, make sure and flatten this stuff. Uh, we're going to see in the, in the future, you know, I may find something that's that high heat that's not going to give off toxic fumes and maybe seal this a little bit more. I believe, though, that this is going to be just fine. Uh, because I've also got some insulation on the outside, which we're going to go over in the next video. But uh, just take those, those three on one edge, three on the other edge, and try to seal this as well as possible. Again, like I said, you could use wood. You could even use wood instead of uh, sheet metal for the interior of the box, too. It would be a little cheaper. Uh, and then once it's done, uh, I took out the metal bolts. I didn't want to paint those uh, because I didn't want to mess up the threads or anything like that. So once it's done, I just use this Rust-Oleum High Heat uh, Ultra Paint. And this is basically barbecue grill paint. Uh, and it's, it's supposed to be absolutely non-toxic once it's dry. Uh, and it should be perfect for the interior of this box. You're not supposed to um, have it with direct flame. But as far as just the box getting up to 350 degrees, it should be fine. Uh, I also let this sit out in the sun after I painted it. Uh, for a few days just to kind of let it bake and just in case basically I'm not sure how necessary that was but just in case So that's it for this part of the project in the next video. We're going to be putting the insulation on uh, the frame of this box on uh, Painting this stuff and then finally we're going to get to uh, The the most intricate part of this thing is putting all the pieces on uh, putting the top frame on putting the hinges on the the plexiglass that I'm going to use for the the door for now. I have a feeling I'm going to use glass in the future, but for right now, like I said, this is kind of a prototype. So I want to use that plexiglass first uh, with a little bit of a, a gasket, a high heat gasket around the edges and, and see how all that stuff works. Get the outside frame to where it's going to hold those panels, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, and then finally, we're going to test it out and compare it with the All-American Sun Oven. I'll cook something in here and maybe I'll start off with boiling some water or seeing how hot it'll get water in this one and the sun oven and then we'll cook something and and see how they stack up against each other. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed make sure and subscribe to the channel below. Uh, the next video will be out shortly with the frame of the box. Uh, if you're watching this in the future it's probably already out. Uh, I've got everything set up on a playlist here for this uh, project so uh, it'll go step by step through there. And also DIYprepping.net, if you go there, uh, it'll give you a step by step tutorial on all the parts of this project. Uh, but again, thanks for watching, and we will see everyone in the next video.